This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to an investigative report that finds many talking heads who've been fanning the flames of war in the news media have ties to Pentagon contractors. In a piece headlined, Who's Paying the Pro-War Pundits?, reporter Lee Fong says many of these commentators, quote, have skin in the game as paid directors and advisors to some of the largest military contractors in the world. Fong continues, ramping up America's military presence in Iraq and directly entering the war in Syria, along with greater military spending more broadly, is a debatable solution to a complex political and sectarian conflict. But those goals do unquestionably benefit one player in this saga, America's defense industry. The ties of pundits to Pentagon contractors who stand to profit off war are not disclosed by the media where they proffer their views. One of the worst offenders in this regard is retired General Jack Keane, who, according to the piece, has appeared on Fox News at least nine times over the last two months advocating military strikes against ISIS. Let's go to a clip from Sunday. I do believe that the air campaign that's taking place in Iraq now will be expanded, but also we should expand immediately into Syria. He does not need congressional authorization for that. I'll leave it to him whether he thinks he should get that or not. But the fact of the matter, from a military perspective, we should be bombing Syria and Iraq simultaneously now. That's retired General Jack Keane speaking on Fox News Sunday. He's introduced simply as a think tank leader and a former military official. Again, what's not disclosed is the range of his affiliations with Pentagon contractors. Keane's a special advisor to Academy, the contractor formerly known as Blackwater, and a board member of the military contractor General Dynamics. He's also a venture partner to SCP Partners, an investment firm that works with military contractors. Keane's think tank has also provided data on ISIS used by The New York Times, the BBC, and other major outlets. To find out more, we go to San Francisco to speak with the author of the piece, Lee Fong. He is an investigative fellow with the Nation Institute, contributing writer at the magazine. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Lee. Talk about morning, First General Keene and some of the other people that you have found. Not The issue is not so much who they work for, but that they are not identified as working for them when they're brought on television. That's right, Amy. Um, we look at a number of prominent pundits, uh, contributors to cable news networks uh, who have gone on television, have appeared in the pages of uh, different print outlets, uh, submitted op-eds. And uh, these individuals are only uh, acknowledged or identified uh, for their previous roles as, um, you know, uh, 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 officials at the State Department or former generals. Um, their current roles as advisors or board members to defense contractors have not been disclosed. Um, many of these individuals have called for an escalation in the region, uh, arming different militant groups, uh, calling for an increased air campaign uh, for entering the conflict in Syria, um, uh, many different military solutions to a very complex problem. Um, but again, uh, as you mentioned, uh, these individuals uh, have not uh, their, their ties to military contractors that could benefit from these policies have not been disclosed. Um, uh, you talked a little bit about former General uh, Jack Keane. Well, Jack Keane is a, uh, the Fox News military analyst. Uh, he appears regularly uh, on uh, the Sunday programs and on uh, primetime television. And remember, Fox News uh, is the largest cable network. Uh, they bring in over uh, 4 million, sometimes 4.5 million viewers. Uh, in their primetime news coverage. And in many cases, Keene is the only um, military voice uh, uh, the, the, the analysts brought in to provide the, the military point of view. So many Americans are only getting his opinion without knowing that um, he, he works for uh, many different defense contractors. Well, I want to turn to comments made by someone else whom you cite in the piece, CN commentator Frances Townsend, who's also been calling for a tougher stance on ISIS. She previously worked in the Bush administration. Let's go to two clips of Townsend on CNN. Bombing ISIS targets in Iraq is not going to be enough, because all you're going to do is push them back into the safe haven that Syria has become. And so we need a strategic plan to absolutely wipe out ISIS completely. And I would say this can't just be an Iraqi operation, because if you do that, then you push ISIS into Syria, where they, where they enjoy safe haven. So you've got to have a broader strategy that includes the safe haven in Syria. That was CNN commentator Frances Townsend. Lee, can you talk about uh, who she is and why it's uh, uh, complicated that she's saying what she is? 
Right. Towson is a former Bush administration official. Um, she's also a contributor to CNN, meaning she's a, a, a regular guest, appearing um, almost every other day in, in, in some weeks. Um, but she's also a uh, advisor to several defense consulting firms. Uh, she also works at um, a holding company, McAndrews and Forbes, which owns several defense contractors. Uh, one of the largest is AM uh, General, which makes uh, Humvees and other armored vehicles. Um, so, uh, obviously, uh, this is a company, AM General in particular, that has benefited from the war in Iraq. They've sold many vehicles uh, to the government there. Um, so, when, when she goes on television and discusses uh, a, a, a military action in Iraq and, in many cases, solely talks about uh, the need to uh, increase uh, military involvement in that region, um, she's not disclosing, again, uh, how uh, some of her current ties to military contractors uh, could pose a conflict of interest. I want to turn to comments made by former head of CENTCOM, retired four-star general Anthony Zinni, who has been advocating for a large deployment of U.S. troops to the region. He recently spoke to Fox News Radio following the release of the video showing U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff being beheaded. I think clearly this is uh, this group uh, has to be dealt with and dealt with firmly. Uh, the atrocities they've committed, near genocide in some cases, the beheadings uh, that are absolutely horrific. Uh, so I think we need to do uh, what we what we are capable of to destroy, uh, especially their conventional capability they've taken from the Iraqis and uh, from others in Syria and Iraq. So I, I mean I support the the airstrikes. I think. Uh, eventually, we're going to have to have a security assistance program in place for the Kurds and the Iraqis to make sure that they can uh, prevent the possibility of ISIS coming back. That's General Anthony Zinni, um, again, advocating for uh, more war in the Middle East. Um, did you call the networks, Li Fang, to get their response to why they're not identifying these pundits or former generals? as contractors for the contractors. We reached out to several of these pundits. Uh, they did not respond. If any of the networks or the pundits do respond, uh, we'll certainly update the piece. But, you know, uh, as, as uh, the, the general you just uh, played a clip from, Anthony Zinni, is a, a, a board member to BAE uh, Systems, one of the largest defense contractors in the world. Um, based in the United Kingdom. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, last or earlier this month, Bank of America released a research note uh, explaining that BAA Systems, uh, which is a stock that slumped um, throughout much of this year, they're expected to rebound uh, because of the conflict uh, in, uh, uh, in Iraq and Syria and in, in, in the region. So, uh, this uh, entire military strategy, the, the, the military escalation, uh, certainly benefits uh, companies like uh, 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 Zinni's firm, BAA Systems. It, do you see a correlation between the number of people advocating for war, or should I say the lack of uh, anti-war response in the media, um, with the polls that show overwhelmingly Americans are for striking Islamic State? Well, sure. Of course, um, military opinion is not monolithic, but on many of these networks, you hear from a limited set of opinions. Um, and, again, for, for Fox News, if you watch their primetime coverage, which is absolutely dominating, it's, it receives uh, more viewers than the two biggest uh, um, competitors, MSNBC and CNN, combined, um, you only hear uh, from a very f uh, 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 small set of opinions. Again, uh, folks like retired General Jack Keane, uh, they're the only uh, military experts brought on for some of these primetime programs. And so, of course, if, if Americans are only hearing from a very select uh, point of view. They aren't hearing from uh, a diverse array of, of, of expert opinion. Um, uh, that's going to influence public opinion. And, and again, uh, um, no one's saying that uh, we shouldn't have uh, some of these former generals speaking in the media. Uh, I think uh, what m many experts, media ethic, ethics professors and others have called for is simply more disclosure. Li Fang, we want to thank you for being with us. A new piece in The Nation we'll link to, who's paying the pro-war pundits. This is Democracy Now! When we come